need a vacation? Do you need a vacation? Come away is the message title from Mark 6. Uh, maybe you do need a vacation. Maybe you've already got one planned out. Maybe for you, every day is a vacation. You can rest when you want. You can shut off the phone, shut off the computer, walk away from the calendar. Not a care in the world. Is that your current life? What is the point of a vacation? Is it for R&R, &R, rest and relaxation? Or does that mean rust and reflection? Or maybe for you, risk and redemption? For most people, when we get away to get, when we go away to get away, we want time to recharge our personal batteries, get rejuvenated. Um, how you decide to do that is a very personal decision. Everybody's different. I have to confess, once my wife and I went on a vacation with another couple, they were longtime friends of ours, they invited us, and we went to the Williamsburg, Virginia area. Anybody been to Williamsburg, Virginia? Oh, lots. It's a wonderful place, and there's lots of history and all kinds of stuff to do. And so we, Leanne and I, we got to, our heads together, we planned a daily itinerary, we wanted to go and see things, we wanted to do things in the area. Guess what? The other couple did not do vacations that way. For them, they would spend time at the location where they had rented space, playing games, swimming, playing tennis, just relaxing, reading a book, sitting next to the pool, not going anywhere. We had not discussed this beforehand. So we had to do some negotiation on this vacation because they didn't necessarily want to go everywhere that we wanted to go. It all worked out. We're still friends with this couple, <laughs> but we have not been on another vacation with them. We just do things differently. And it was a bit of miscommunication before that vacation. Jesus and his disciples were working hard and doing ministry. The people were continuing to be persistent in what they wanted. People can be that way. People can be hard to deal with. Do you agree? One of my colleagues has said, ministry is a wonderful vocation except for the people. I think they're joking, but I don't know. Jesus determines they had to, the need for a breather, a break, a mini vacation, a time to recharge their personal lives and their batteries. Ha! Fooled him, didn't they? One commentary noted that it is about four miles across the Sea of Galilee, but it's about ten miles on foot going up and around the edge. Depending on the wind, your rowing muscles, it may take a while to row across the lake. In fact, the people beat them around the lake. Jesus said to his disciples, let's go off by ourselves to a quiet place and rest for a while. He said this because there were so many people coming and going that Jesus and his apostles, they didn't even have time to eat. Not even time to catch their breath. They needed a break. But they would not get one easily. The people were persistent. People recognized Jesus' authority. Remember that more than once they said, we've never heard such teaching. He teaches as one with authority. Jesus was the genuine article, the real deal, the one they had longed for, the one sent from God on a special mission. Now we find in verse 34, Jesus stepping from the boat and seeing this large crowd and it's growing larger by the minute, people from far and near are heading that way and the text says, Jesus had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. They were like lost sheep looking for guidance, that's all. And healing, and redemption, and salvation. I suspect they did not realize what all they really needed. They would in time understand it better. So many people are really lost, and they have no idea how lost they are. Have you ever been there? 
You are wandering around chasing after stuff, maybe the wrong stuff. You're clueless about how much you need a shepherd. Not just any shepherd, but the good shepherd. You think you've got it all figured out. <laughs> you think life is yours and you are content that your soul knows differently. You have been filled, filling up your life with the wrong things. Now you suddenly discover that you need the real deal. You need the one who is the way and the truth and the life. Your soul needs sustenance from this one person, Jesus. No other will suffice. These people realized it. They came hungrily to hear him. Now the second part of the reading, Jesus, after he ministers there, he goes across the lake again. He arrives at a place called Gennesaret. And the people recognized him immediately, and they began to bring the sick people to him. Realized that as a group, they still have not had a break. The text between these two, the gap between these two texts we read, there was the miracle of loaves and fishes, and also there was the disciples crossing the sea, and the sea becomes turbulent, and Jesus comes out to meet them, and Peter steps out of the boat and actually walks on the water. Well, he takes a couple steps anyway. And then he starts to sink, remember. The point is that these were busy times for them. Every moment filled with teaching and healing, miracles and people. Every moment, a full moment. Jesus did get a short break after the loaves and fishes. And once the disciples left him, he was alone on that mountaintop for prayer be alone with God, his daddy, how necessary that is. Do you remember the fourth commandment? We spoke of it with the children. Exodus 20, 8 through 11, it says, Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. Do you think Jesus kept the Sabbath? Did he obey the rules? Recall how many miracles he did on the Sabbath, and he said, man was made from the Sabbath, not the Sabbath made for mankind. He did rest and renew, but he did it on his own terms. This mindset of rest was instituted by God himself before we were ever thought of. He had his burst of creative energy, big bang or small bang, and then he paused to rest, to renew, to recharge. Not that God needs recharging the same way we do. So why did God rest? Why? As a model for us? As a law of dynamics? A body set in motion will stay in motion. A body at rest will remain at rest unless acted upon by another force. Maybe God had knowledge that we would not always rest when we needed to. That God knew us better than we know ourselves. Our youngest child, when they were very young, would literally keep going until they collapsed from exhaustion. Sometimes they even fell asleep in the high chair at dinner. You know, face plop right in the mashed potatoes. <laughs> they did not want to stop or miss out on anything. But the body, even a two-year-old body, gets tired and needs rest. The pace could not be kept going forever. How about you? How about you? Have you learned the rhythm of your own body? Have you learned when to stop, when to rest, when to take nourishment, when to keep going? Are you learning that? I do think that Jesus was trying to teach the, ex the disciples by example. Hey guys, you've been busy. We've done some good ministry. We need to rest. He wanted to set it down. He wanted them to understand that rhythms are there for a purpose. The rest in music serves a purpose. The pause in play has a purpose. When you think of a hummingbird, what image comes to mind? Almost constant motion is what I think of. These are amazing creatures. I love to watch them 
Here are six fun facts about hummingbirds. One, they can fly both forward and backward. Uh, and I don't know if you know it, their wings go in kind of a figure eight shape. And they can move forward or backward. They're the only birds that can do that. Their wings beat 70 times per second unless they are in a steep dive. And then it's 200 beats per second. They eat over twice their body weight every single day. In one article I read, it said they might visit 2,000 flowers as sipping at the nectar in a day. They're busy. Some hummers migrate vast distances from their summer to the winter home. The ruby-throated hummingbird goes over 2,000 miles, flies down to Central America for their, for their winter vacation. They have no sense of smell. And finally, they have more neck vertebrae than most mammals do. So the other morning, I was outside, I was filling up my bird feeders, I was hanging my bird feeders, I had several different bird feeders, and a small hummingbird comes along, and he, he flits between three or four of my bird feeders, but then he did something very unexpected. I found it unexpected. He just stopped and sat on the top of one of the crooks. And I was standing maybe six feet away from this hummingbird, and I was just able to stop and watch and observe. And he just sat there. And this is, we're talking minutes, several minutes. He's sitting there. Well, he preened himself. He defecated. He looked around, kind of observed everything. And after a couple of minutes, then he began to fly again and went around his business checking for more nectar and checking out my feeders. Here's the thing. If a hummingbird can rest, so can you. If a hummingbird can take a moment of rest, so can I. And we need to learn that balance in our lives of work and rest, thought and spirit, play and prayer. Come away. Come away, Jesus says, and find a quiet place. Would you pray with me? Oh Lord God, help us to find the balance that you desire, to take time to rest, to find peace for body and mind and soul, to seek you out in this busy world and refocus our lives upon you. We pray in God, Father and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Amen.